three weeks ago, I was at La Jolla Cove, and I was walking around on the rocks with my kids um, near the ocean, and my shoes started to get really sandy. So I took them off, took them off, and I'm stepping on the soft sand, um, and I'm getting wet and, you know, really feeling it. And then my kids pointed out that there's this pier that goes out into the water, and they want to go. So I said, yeah, let's go. We're anyway, we're wet, we're having fun. Let's go out. So we start heading down a whole bunch of steps, and then we start walking on the pier. And we're walking one step, two steps, three steps, and suddenly I'm like, ouch, I'm in tremendous pain. And I look down, and I realize that I made a colossal error. Before, I didn't want to get my shoes sandy, so I took them off. Now I'm stuck, because I'm stepping on these big, jagged rocks that are cemented together, and they're super pointy. And I'm trying to step one foot at another, and I'm in so much pain. Problem is I'm midway on the bridge. And a part of me wants to go to the end because I want to show the kids the seal beach. I want to show them the crashing waves. And another part of me, I can't move. Every step is painful. And I'm thinking to myself, it's incredible. All I need is a little piece of rubber. A little piece of rubber with a little bit of leather on top. Bingo. I can walk seamlessly. Suddenly I'm missing my buffer, every single rock, and I'm telling you there are millions of them cemented together, every single one was causing me tremendous pain. Every step was premeditated. Which stone is less jagged? Should I go to the right? Should I go to the left? I'm stuck in the middle. There were people behind me. There were people ahead of me. And I painfully walked back to shore. I finally got my shoes. And I started thinking, all I needed was a little buffer zone. All I needed was that tiny rubber sole to ease the jagged rocks. I had a friend over who was talking to me about her challenge. She's struggling with primary infertility. And she's been going for treatment for the last couple of years. She wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning so she could be there at 6, so at 9 o'clock she could go to work. And she's gone through two miscarriages, and she's been and she said the greatest struggle is not the infertility. It's the inability for anybody in the community to understand. Because whereas we'll talk about diabetes and we'll talk about many illnesses, there are many things that we consider taboo. Infertility being one of them. And when something becomes taboo, then we can't have a conversation. And if we can't have a conversation, then how in the world are we going to communicate what we need from each other? You see, the world has a lot of jagged rocks. A lot of places that we walk that are really painful. But that's what friends are for. That's what family's for. That's what community's for. We're there to be the buffer zone. We're that tiny rubber sole that suddenly makes me buoyant, that makes me be able to run instead of painfully walking on each rock. But if we can't communicate about the things that we need, because they're taboo, then how do we know what to give each other? There are many things that, in our communities, we ace. Yeah, if God forbid somebody gets ill, there are dozens of organizations that take care of that. If somebody has a baby, they're gonna be getting three hot meals a day. They're gonna get all the mother's helpers from whatever local schools are there. Their kids are gonna be fielded out. But what happens to that lady who is struggling. Struggling, not just the lady, because the couple is struggling. And I don't know what they need, because everybody needs something else. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Some people would appreciate a box of chocolate. Other people would say, you know what, I'd love to go on vacation and I can't afford it. Other people, all I want is you to acknowledge that I'm suffering. I'm struggling. Other people, I don't want to talk about it at all. Treat me, treat me like everybody else. Somebody told me that if they get one more call to be what we call kvater. Kvater is those who carry the baby in at the Brit. It's generally the honor given to people who still don't have children. She said to me, I've been called by hundreds of people who don't know me. And they're very well-meaning. But I'm sick and tired of being the Nebuch case of town. I'm sick and tired of being your charity case. And again, I don't think the people who called meant ill. But if we were allowed to have a conversation and communicate, 
so then we can figure out what's that buffer that you need. What's that cushion that I can provide so the shock isn't so great? What's going to be that shock absorber that's going to make life a little bit easier? And I'm asking us because it's not just infertility. There are many things that are taboo. The field that I work in especially. Mental illness for a very long time was something that it's all in your head. And if it's all in your head, just think it away. Right? Interestingly enough, nobody has ever, ever says that to somebody who has diabetes. They never say, oh, you think your blood sugar is going down? Eh, it's all in your head. No, it's not all in your head. Right? It's something very real. And unfortunately, when it comes to mental illness, there are a lot of taboos. There are people who are suffering. People who are struggling. And I'm challenging us, us as a community, us as individuals, to look and say, you know, what are the things I'm afraid of confronting? What are the things that are taboo for me that people would not talk to me because they know she might be a little more judgmental. She might have a very strong opinion about that. She might be just callous, downright callous. And I'm asking us, can we be better buffers? Can we provide our friends with what they need? Can we give them that rubber sole so that when life is giving them a bunch of jagged rocks, they can start walking a little faster. They can hold their heads up a little higher. Because all of us, all of us have those areas that are tough. All of us have those areas where if we only had a friend we can confide in. Shlomo HaMelech. Shlomo HaMelech, the wisest of all men, says if you have a worry in your heart, share it with somebody. Because just by sharing and validating, you know, people are always afraid to have conversations because I, I don't have the answers. And in social work, we always say you don't need the answers. What you need is a good listening ear. Because just validating, just letting another person talk without judging, just listening, that already helps. Because I've taken my burden and I've shared it. It's not this big black monster anymore. It's something that's workable. It's big. It's challenging but it's surmountable. And I'm asking us, let's be there for our friends. Let's be there for the people who need us most because we all need each other. We all end up on that pier, sometimes somewhere, stuck without a pair of shoes, wishing that somebody would just throw me a little piece of rubber so I can walk a little bit better.